Jaws and Claws. They are the ocean's most feared predator. Silent, relentless, perfected over millions of years. And yet, hidden inside their very cells is a mystery so deep that even the world's top shark scientists are baffled. A genetic riddle buried in their DNA. One that defies every rule we thought we knew about evolution. This is the story of the great white shark's impossible code. And the truth is, it makes no sense. For decades, we've told ourselves that we understand this apex hunter. We've studied their teeth, their speed, their migration routes. We've watched them breach the surface in explosive bone-shaking attacks. But in the last 20 years, researchers began to look deeper, not at their bodies, but at their blueprint. The genome, the very instruction manual of a great white shark. And what they found shattered the idea of one unified global species. It started with a question that seemed simple. Are all great whites, from the icy waters of South Africa to the turquoise coasts of Australia to the rocky Atlantic, genetically the same? For years, the answer was assumed to be yes. One powerful species ruling every ocean. But in 2024, a landmark study proved that assumption dead wrong. The results? There aren't one, but three distinct great white lineages. Three branches of the same family tree, all descended from a single population that lived around 10,000 years ago. Just before the last ice age slammed the oceans into a colder, harsher state. One group rules the North Pacific. Another commands the Southern Pacific and the Indian Ocean. And the third lurks in the North Atlantic and Mediterranean. Three realms, three bloodlines. So far, so simple. We see this in other species. Ocean currents, geography, and migration patterns can split populations over time. But here's the problem. When scientists tried to explain why the DNA was split like this, every theory collapsed. Every simulation failed. Every road led to a dead end. To understand why, we have to dive into the difference between two kinds of DNA. Inside every cell, in the heart of the nucleus, is the nuclear DNA the massive archive inherited from both parents. But floating outside that nucleus, inside the tiny power plants of the cell, the mitochondria is another code, mitochondrial DNA or mtDNA. And here's the key, mtDNA is passed down almost entirely from the mother. That makes mitochondrial DNA a kind of maternal signature, a living fingerprint of the mother's lineage carried through the female line for thousands of years. Conservationists use it like a map, tracing where populations are, where they've been, and where they might go. But with great whites, that map is broken. When scientists looked at their nuclear DNA, the three groups looked nearly identical. But when they looked at mtDNA, the three groups were shockingly different. It was like opening two books that should tell the same story and finding one written in a completely different language. The first explanation seemed obvious, female philopatry. That's when females return to the place of their birth to give birth themselves. It's a behavior seen in sea turtles, salmon, and even other sharks. It would mean that while males roam freely, females anchor the genetics to a home turf, passing down their distinct mtDNA in each region. And there's evidence that fits. Tagging studies show female great whites making long migrations but returning to familiar coastal nurseries when it's time to mate. It's poetic. The idea of these ocean giants navigating by ancient memory to the place where life began for them. But when Gavin Naylor and his team tested the hypothesis, it crumbled. They sequenced the genes of 150 great whites from across the globe. If female philopatry were real, there would be a small telltale pattern in the nuclear DNA, a shadow of their separation. But it wasn't there. The nuclear DNA was smooth, continuous, no sign of females staying put. So they tried another simulation, an evolutionary model of how the three empty DNA groups might have emerged from a single ancestor over 10,000 years. Even with extreme assumptions, females never leaving their birthplace, the pattern didn't match. It wasn't just unlikely, it was impossible. Next, Naylor considered something radical, maybe the sex ratio was skewed. What if, generation after generation, only a few females were breeding in each region, while males move more freely? a genetic bottleneck of motherhood. But again, the data refused to cooperate. No sign of the pattern such a bottleneck would leave behind. Could it be genetic drift? That slow, random drift of mutations over time? No. Drift is lazy, sloppy, and predictable. 
and the sharp boundaries of mtDNA didn't match its signature. The mystery deepened. Every known explanation was collapsing. It was as if some invisible hand had reshaped the mitochondrial DNA of these sharks and done it in a way that our understanding of evolution simply can't account for. There was only one remaining possibility, one that made the scientists uncomfortable, natural selection. Somehow, in each ocean realm, certain versions of mtDNA might have been so beneficial, so critical to survival, that they swept through the population in a lightning strike of adaptation. The catch? For that to happen in such small populations, only about 20,000 great whites exist in the world. The advantage would have to be enormous, not just helpful, life or death. It would have to save them from something brutally lethal. But what could that be? A disease that strikes at the very heart of their metabolism? A predator, natural or environmental, that punishes certain mitochondrial traits? A change in ocean chemistry so severe it rewrites the rules of cellular energy? No one knows. Naylor himself admits the honest scientific answer is, we have no idea. Some piece of the puzzle is missing. Something in the life of great whites is shaping their maternal DNA in ways we can't see, can't measure, can't yet imagine. And it's not just a curiosity for biologists. Understanding this mystery could mean the difference between saving these animals, watching them vanish. Because mitochondrial DNA isn't just a genetic quirk, it's tied to how cells make energy. If the pattern is driven by a hidden environmental pressure, then each lineage could be finely tuned to its own realm. A sudden change in temperature, oxygen, or prey could tip that balance and threaten an entire lineage. The implications ripple outward. For years, conservation policies have treated great whites as a single global species. But if each lineage is distinct, genetically and perhaps functionally, then protecting them means understanding those divisions. A nursery in South Africa can't replace one in California. Lose one lineage and we may lose a third of the species forever. Naylor's team leaves us with a chilling thought. This isn't just about great whites. Other shark species have been assumed to follow female philopatry based on mtDNA patterns. What if we've been wrong again? What if, hidden beneath the waves, an entire set of evolutionary rules is operating, rules we've never seen before? Picture it, a great white cutting through the cold green water off Cape Cod. Every muscle tuned, every sense alive, hunting for the faint electric pulse of prey. Inside its cells, the mitochondria hum with energy, energy dictated by a genetic script that has traveled, unbroken, from mother to daughter for thousands of years. But why this script? Why here? And why does it differ so sharply from her cousins in the Pacific, or the sharks that patrol the reefs of South Africa? Science has mapped the genome of our own species, charted the genes of everything from fruit flies to blue whales. Yet here, in the blood of the ocean's most famous predator, lies a code that refuses to be read. Maybe the answer's buried in ancient migrations during the last ice age. Maybe it's in some lost ecological battle we will never witness. Or maybe it's in a threat that hasn't yet arrived, one that their DNA is already preparing them for. For now, the riddle stands. Three great white nations separated by invisible borders written not on the map, but in their cells. A maternal legacy that defies every evolutionary model and a reminder that for all we think we know, the ocean still holds secrets deep enough to swallow our certainty whole. Somewhere out there, a great white is gliding beneath the waves, carrying the code of her ancestors, a code we still can't decipher, a code that may one day rewrite everything we know about life in the sea. Until then, the mystery waits. Join us next week on Jaws and Claws for the next animal documentary. Any requests? Put them in the comments.